Okay, so I really want to make sure that what I talk to you about today is going to be as valuable to you as possible. Okay, so I want to give you three options. I have three options of what I can speak on today. And can I get interaction from you of just letting me know which one you want me to speak on, okay? Yeah. Cool? Okay, so option one is three ways to double your online sales without spending more on ads offering additional products, or selling your soul to unethical business schemes. Option two is how to write yourself a trip to Cabo with no additional work required. Discover the shockingly simple way to write yourself a $4,347 check by the end of this presentation. Or learn how to write copy and use email marketing to improve your online e-commerce sales. So I'm going to show them again, and I want you to raise your hand at the, which one drew you in that you want me to speak on today. Okay, sound good? Yes. So raise your hand if you want me to speak on number one. Okay, a couple of you, very few. Option two. A couple, okay, maybe like 10%. Three? Yes. Everyone. Interesting, interesting. So, oh, whoa. Bring it on back. It's a little delay in this clicker, <laughs> apparently. Okay, so all of those exact titles lead to the same three ninja tricks that I'm going to reveal to you today. And that is the power of copy. So, I would say about 90% of the people in this room wanted me to speak on the third one, which quite honestly for me, that, that shocked me. I thought it was going to be the second one. So that's the power of number one, copy, in how to meet the person where they're at and draw them in. And number two, the power of a split test, right? So now I know for a future reference, if I'm going to be speaking to you, I'm going to lead with number three. Make sense? So. I want to know a little bit more, though, about um, your whole experience the last week. All of you have been sitting here for the last five days, which is giving up your most valuable asset, which is your time, to learn skills, strategies, tactics, and tools. And I don't want to overwhelm you with a ton of content. I want to give you something meaty, something that you can go and implement immediately in your business and really double up your business if you're an intermediate entrepreneur or if you're just starting, really double your investment that you made of showing up here. Does that sound good? Yep. Okay, and whether it was with me in this talk or one of the other speakers, I want you to do something for me for a moment, is just write down on your page, if you're taking notes, my double up strategy my double up strategy, and I want you to really think about, as I'm speaking um, to you for the rest of this presentation, of thinking about what is the one thing that I can do immediately in order to double up my sales or double up my investment, double up my business. What is that one thing that I can do? Because I know I, I can relate to you so much. I sit in the seat that you're in right now probably once a month, I'm constantly learning just like you. It's one of the most powerful things we can do as entrepreneurs. And can anyone, is anyone feeling that feeling of like overwhelm, of like, holy, there's so much to do. There's so many strategies, which one do I do first? Does anyone feel that? Yeah, I can totally relate. And so the goal here is not to water hose you with so much information that it numbs you, but really for you to step on that plane of going back home or getting in the car and going back home after this presentation and saying, I got this. Like, I know exactly what I need to do. Cool? Cool. So, and, and, and also, so you can really ask yourself why. Have any of you taken a moment 
of the last five days and just been like, why do I want this so bad? Why do, why do I want to double my sales? Why do I want to um, double my Facebook ads? And get clear of that too. And I want you to paint that picture in your mind right now, again, as I'm speaking of, is it because you want to take your family on a bi-yearly uh, bi trip around the world? Is it because you want to purchase the new car that you've had your eye on, which is totally cool, right? Sometimes we feel guilty for like, oh, I just want a brand new car. Um, or maybe it's that kitchen renovation that your wife or your husband has been reminding you that they want. Or maybe it's simply just ordering the nice bottle of wine at dinner. Yeah? An island on the South Pacific. Or paying for your kid's college tuition. <laughs> or whatever it is that really motivates you to be the hypomaniac that you are on this entrepreneurial roller coaster, because it is a lot of work. It's a lot of emotion, right? And a hypomaniac is the good kind of crazy, because we're all crazy in this room, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> so I want you to think of what that one thing is for you. Why are you doing all of this? Why? Freedom. Freedom. Yes, what else? Why are you doing all this? Island. The island. He wants the island. What do you want? The island. She wants the island too. Yeah. She wants to donate hers to charity. I love that. Yeah. Having a float plane to fly from island to island. <laughs> float plane to fly from island to island. I love it. So whatever that is for you, I want you to write that down right next to your double up strategy. I want to double my business because this is what I really want and get clear of that. So I want to share with you a little bit about myself because a lot of you may not, um, you've heard of the people who I've worked with, um, but I really want you to share of where I started. Uh, because one thing that I recognize too when I'm sitting in the seat that you're in right now is I'll see people on, on stage and they're talking about how they built a, a $6 million business in three years or like a $10 million business or they made their first 100K month and you're like, oh my gosh, that's so awesome. And then there's this feeling that just like your gut tightens up and you're like, I'm not there yet. And why am I not there yet? You know? You start getting really hard on yourself. Why am I not there yet? I should be somewhere different than where I'm at right now. Why am I working so hard and I'm not getting the results that I want? And I'll, I've felt the exact same way. And you may be like, bullshit, Jen, you felt the exact same way. But I want to show you. So here, I, with people in the back, can you play this slide? Because it looks like it's not on my computer. Oh, it's weird. A little technical difficulty here. So there we go. Ah, uh, awesome. Okay, here we go. Um, December eighth, two thousand fifteen. Um, I thought that this would be the perfect time to do my first blog post because I am scared shitless of what is going to happen. Um, I'm graduating in five days and I'm so excited. Um, but there is definitely some fear coming up because I'm stepping into finally doing my business full time, which is what I wanted the entire time, the thought of working somewhere else just scared the crap out of me. And so this is, this is what I want, this is my dream, and I'm, there's some fear coming up. Excitement and fear. And I'm the one determining if I make a paycheck or not with my business, and I need to be making enough to pay my costs and to also pay myself. And so that scares me a little bit. Um, I guess I'm just really scared of the unknown. I'm really excited. I totally believe that I'm going to be able to do this. I have no doubt in my mind um, that this is 
this is part of the process, but I feel like a lot of people don't really talk about the messy stuff and kind of the between of, am I going to do it? Yeah, I'm going to do it. Am I going to, oh my gosh, it's scary. And not really seeing the success yet. So I'm, I'm a little nervous <laughs> to say the least. Um, but I'm ready. I'm ready. Can anyone, can anyone relate to that feeling? Raise your hand. That fear of the unknown that just numbs you. It's the first feeling that you wake up with and the last feeling before you go to bed. Yeah, I feel that. So when I say, like, oh, I know, because some of you, you maybe step, you want to step out of your business full t or your um, full time job, right? And it's scary. I feel you. Little did I know that a year and four months later, I, well, in less than a year, I built a half a million dollar business, was working with people like Joe Polish sitting next to people like Ryan Dice in Masterminds, um, speaking on stages, speaking on this stage today, um, being with that amazing group of people in the middle right-hand corner like Brennan Bouchard, Dean Graziosi, Joe Polish, Harvey McKay, Sean Stevenson, and those becoming my peers, those becoming the people who are looking to me to help them build out their sales funnel and their copywriting. I had no idea, but I really believed in myself and trusted the process. And if there's anything that I can share with you, I'm going I'm to go into the nitty gritty tactics, I promise you, in a moment here. But if there's anything that I can share with you, it's like doubling up on yourself. Because if you make that decision to really go all in on yourself and have a no plan B plan, and shift that energy, amazing things can happen. But if you're kind of like playing on the fence or playing small, it's going to take longer. It's not going to feel as good. So I would just wanted to share that with you because I get where you're at right now. And things can hap happen quickly when you really step up and show up. So I want to share with you three ninja tricks, I'm calling them. And so I'm going to start with the first one of really how to rock your prospect's world's world using words. And so copy is essentially just written words that sell. A lot of people will say that copywriting is dead. Um, but copy is what you say in your video, what you say in your audio, what you say on the page when people come from your ad that's going to determine, do I stay here, do I opt in, or do I leave? That is your copy. So I'm not telling you today that you need to create a whole nother funnel or that you need to roll out a new product. You get to do, it's just looking at what you currently have from a different lens of how can I attract more people in initially, and then on the back end, how can I really get consistent clients or customers buying from me by, can, by written words that sell through email, whatever it may be. So I want to share with you the first step when it comes to copy, and that is you need to capture people's attention within seconds. And the way that you do that is through a pattern interrupt, right? So people, quite honestly, your ideal customers are sitting on the toilet going through Facebook looking for something to entertain them. They're not looking to buy. You need to write something that will capture their attention, create a pattern interrupt to make them immediately switch states and think, oh my gosh, for some reason I, I have this crazy insight to buy a t-shirt. And so I want to give you this quick example of um, a Facebook ad that I literally ran with my own stuff last week. 
and one of these clearly outperformed the other. And I, wanna, I want you to look at the very first title um, in both ads. Both of them look very similar, right? But the very first one, and I want you to tell me which one you think converted better. Option A, wonder why few people on your list are opening, clicking, and actually engaging in your emails that you're sending, question mark. Or option two, are you trying to sleep with your prospects on the first date? Two, two right? Yeah, and, and that's exactly what happened. That one clearly outperformed. However, I didn't know if I didn't test. That's why I even got all of you to share it with, with me which option that you wanted. But we don't know, and we think sometimes what we think is our copy is super cool, ends up not converting. Um, so you need to test, but that very first step is a pattern interrupt. A couple different ways that you can do this immediately is when you drive someone, whether it is a Facebook ad, whether it's on your landing page, whether it's on your cart, a couple headline approaches, how to X without Y. How to do some sort of desired thing that they want, without doing some undesired thing that they want. How to lose weight without exercising. Or the shockingly simple secret to blank. Or what people don't want you to know about e-commerce. It needs to be something that captures them in. Make sense? Step two is you need to meet them where they are currently at. This is the biggest mistake that I made when I started my first online business. It was fitness coaching. And I was in the fitness world, so I understood macros and body fat percentage and all these things. So when I wrote my sales page, my ideal clients were millennial women. What these millennial women wanted is they wanted to go to the mall and try on clothes and not feel like crap when they left. They wanted to rock a bikini at their pool party that they were going to and not cancel because they were too embarrassed to show up. They thought about food 24-7. They would like eat in private. And I was, when I first created my first sales page on knowing copy, I was like, learn how to use macros so that you get fit or how to like lower your cholesterol and like all this techno babble that they had zero emotional charge around. So what I had to do is I, I literally went and started interviewing all my ideal clients. Where are you at right now? And in their language, taking things down. I don't want to go to pool parties. That's what they say, because I'm too embarrassed to rock a bikini. Okay, I wrote that down, took notes. And I compiled all of where they saw themselves right now and the problem that they had in their language. And then I would ask them, over here, what's the new you look like? What does that look like? Well, I'm super confident. I wake up every single day feeling like really confident. I can rock any clothes I want. All of the specific language that they used. And I'm like, okay, great. Now I, I, as my job as a copywriter, I need to build a bridge. So there's the old them wherever your person at, and, and you may be selling products online, you may say, Jen, this is irrelevant to me. It's so relevant to you because why are they buying that product in the first place? There's some newer version of them that's that much cooler and smarter and more awesome because of your product. So you need to paint that picture just like I did for you when asking you, why are you doing this in the first place? So meeting them right there where they're at. And then you need to show them how you will get there by giving them some sort of result in advance or educating them in your copy of why giving them the confidence to work with you or buy from you by educating them. So education-based marketing. And the best way that you could do education-based marketing is by entering their conversation that's going on in their mind and answering their objections, which I'll cover in a couple two points here. So you need to make them feel confident to buy from you, and then you need to show them how you're going to get them to that newer version of themselves. And you do all this through copy. And you may say, how do I figure out what these people want? Right? How do I figure this out? You ask them, and you take notes, and you interview them. Make sense? Cool. So I'm going to go on to step three, 
which is what I, I mentioned in step two a little bit, you need to overcome their objections by bringing them up. So Robert Colley here, which is one of the greatest copywriters and marketers um, of all time, said you need to enter the conversation already taking place in your prospect's mind. So if you sell a product online, asking the people, what goes through your mind when making that decision-making process? They may pull up your stuff and the conversation that immediately goes in their mind is, this seems sketchy, or this doesn't seem credible, or this won't work for me, or I've tried this before. And you need to just bring that up because the more that you bring up the conversation that's going on in their mind, the quicker that you're going to be able to connect with them and the quicker the trust that you're going to be able to build with them. When you have trust, when you have attention, you're able to motivate them to do what you want if it's in their highest interest. Last part, super important. So you may, for example, if some of you are trying to get people on calls, for example, a lot of us know when people ha say that it's a strategy call or a clarity call or something like that, you may think it's a sales call. They're going to try to sell me and they're going to make me feel bad if I don't buy from them. So something that my co um, company has done is, hey, you probably don't want to show up on this call but you think, because you think you're going to be sold to. Now I'm going to let you know right now that we're all about value-based marketing, so I'm going to help you build a bridge of where you're at to where you want to go. And if I feel like it's a good fit at the end, I'm going to let you know. And I'm going to tell you how I can work with you. But if I don't think it's a good fit for you or me, I'm also going to let you know. So you don't have to worry about me like selling you or doing a weird switch and bait. So I just brought up that conversation. And so I want you to ask yourself, what is the conversation that's going on in my buyer's mind? Because they have a ton of options too. What's the difference? They may be coming in. What's the difference of this over this? And you just need to answer it. Doesn't need to be super fancy, tactical, but just answer that question. You may be feeling this. That's a really good question. Here's our answer to it. Cool? Is this helpful so far? Yeah. Let me know. Okay. Step four is that story sell. Now, I'm not going to go too deep into this because this can be a whole other training in itself, but I really want to share this strategy with you because it is what I use consistently with my seven, eight, and even nine figure um, clients of building out email campaigns and the copy around them is I really focus on story-based um, copy because emotions trump logic always. And if you can get someone into an emotional state, and, and through story, they're that much open, that much more open, and people make emotional decisions. They like to think that it's logic, but it's not. It's emotion. So if you're going to write a story, you can write this on your sales page. You can write this in your emails. You can put this in your video in your Facebook ad that leads them to the landing page. You can write this in your Facebook ad. There's many different mediums of using story, and it doesn't need to be a long story. It can be short. But the very first thing is you need a character. So you need to develop who is the main character in this story and address it. And then step two is in every good story, the character has some sort of desire. They have the new version of them that they want to go both external and internally. They, they want to become a new person, essentially. But step three is they have a problem. They don't know how they're going to get there. So they may have external problems financially. They're not making enough money. Physically, they're overweight. Emotionally, they just had a divorce. And then there's also the internal problems, and you need to bring those up, of like the doubts, the fears, the insecurities, of really entering that conversation that's going on in their mind. And then also like the philosophical. Maybe they're struggling with the problem of like good versus evil or materialistic versus values. I really want this big fancy car, that's my goal, and yet I feel super guilty for wanting it. That, that right there, that's the four steps, just in that sentence alone. So it doesn't have to be a long story. The, the fourth step is they go on a track. So they have their desire, they're on the way to their desire, and they have a current problem that they're facing, but they go on a track to try find the solution 
to their problem so that they can become the new version of themselves. And on that trek, they'll meet mentors, they'll face problems, they'll overcome those problems, hopefully, they'll teach them lessons. And then they come to step five, which is the call to action, where it is in your business, you can say, literally like, you may, um, I'll never forget when I started out in, I'll give a quick example myself, in um, email marketing, I like drank the online marketing Kool-Aid and started building an email list, but I had no idea what I was doing and I was super confused. I started building my email list because that's what I was told to do. In four months, I built it to 300 people and I did my first launch. I sold out in 48 hours, I was feeling on top of the world. And so I got super cocky and I thought that I could do that again and again. And my second launch, I sold five out of 20 spots. My third launch, I sold, spent, or sold four out of 10 spots. And my fourth launch, I sold six out of 50 spots. And I was like, maybe I'm not made up to be, do this. This is too challenging. I'm losing money. This doesn't work. I met some of my mentors today who showed me what I was missing, the missing components. I implemented those things and I had a choice. Do I just throw in the towel or do I make a decision, the call to action? Do I keep down this track because I know that it's what I really, really want? Or do I just throw in the towel because I failed the last four times? But I made the decision to go in the path of keep working, keep trying at it. And the result was I started to gain momentum and become successful. I filled up my second launch, or my next launch and the launch after that. That's a quick story, right? And then you can use that in your business as the call to action or the result is you. Are you going to keep going this old way or are you going to go this new way that's better, that you, what, what is really what you want? Does that make sense? Because anyone, can anyone see how you can use story in your business right now? Raise your hand. Cool. So that's step four. Stories really sell. And it, again, it doesn't have to be really fancy. Step five, this is the biggest mistake that I see over and over and over again when it comes to looking at sales pages and launches and copy on all the social media platforms is people are selling the airplane, not the destination. So I want you to think about the last flight that you took to some vacation that you really, really enjoyed. Maybe it was Hawaii, maybe it was Cabo, maybe it was to Europe, and it was like this amazing trip. You probably chose that destination though, and was like, I wanna go here, how do I get there? Oh, I need an airplane, that's the quickest way that I'm gonna get to Europe. You weren't like, mm, I just really want to take an airplane somewhere and I don't really care where I go. I just want to hop on an airplane, sit in the airport for two hours, get pat down by some strange lady. No, right? And so the same is with your prospects, the same is with your customers. They honestly don't want the product or the service, they want the destination of what it's going to do for them. So in your copy, it's so important to constantly be talking about that destination and really making sure it's the destination that they want to go to and using the language for whatever that niche is that you're talking about. Cool? Yeah. All right, so we are going to go into ninja trick number two, which is relationship-based marketing. Now, I wanna share a quick story with you. So um, when I was in college, um, I wasn't the smartest tool in the shed, per se. I was like the C's get degrees kind of gal. And, uh, uh, but, but my strength was building relationships, like building authentic relationships with people. And over everything, every strategy, tool, tactic that I've implemented in my business, bar none, that is the one that has made me reach the degree of success I have as quickly as I have, is how to form an authentic relationship with people. So I'm in college, one of my professors makes an intro um, between me and 
two entrepreneurs that he knows. Um, their names are Greg Haig and Harvey McKay. You may have heard of Harvey McKay, uh, Swim with the Sharks. And my professor was like, you need to find a position for Jen in your business of her helping you in some sort of way. She's like smart and savvy. And I remember going up to him the next day after getting that email. I'm like, hey, I think you accidentally sent me an email that was supposed to go to another student. And he's like, what do you mean? I was like, you're talking about being like smart and like the, that I was like smart and savvy and I have a C in your class right now. But he had no idea because we had like built this relationship um, of him just seeing like who I was as being like a hardworking, I'm not going to give up, very resilient type of person. And so that opened the door to me of the online world of really starting to discover the different experts in the space of like the Joe Polish and Dean Graziosi and Brennan Bouchard who full circle became some of my clients. Um, but over everything, and even when I started my online businesses, when I looked at building my email list, it wasn't like how can I convert these people? It was like how can I build a relationship with them quickly so that they trust me enough to give me their money in order for a result, in order for a solution to their problem that they're really, like that keeps them up at night. How can I build that relationship with them? And that's really what I did. And so um, a stat is research shows that if you follow up with your new leads within five minutes, um, you are nine times more likely to convert them. And so that's like, that's using email, for example. And so who here uses email marketing in their business? Who here feels like you do a good job at it? Like one and a half, two and a half people. Because like one person's like, ah. So one of the quickest ways is like, remember that the person on the other side of the screen is a human being. They're a human being with problems, with a family, with dreams and desires. And so all of this, the copy tactics that I just shared with you can immediately be implemented in just like remembering that they're a human and building that relationship with them. And yeah, you want them to buy your product or service. Of course, you're in the business of making money. And I challenge you and invite you to really start to get more curious of who is on the other side of that screen and like what are some more of their desires that they want and how can you connect with them through email. Maybe it's like you tell a quick story. Hey, I noticed that you just purchased this product. Um, I was out with my family the other evening and we ended up using that product when we did X and I thought that that would be helpful for you. Like send it like it's your friend, your, your clients or your customers or your buyers, treat them like a friend. And that's one of the quickest ways that you're going to be able to double your sales. Forrester research suggests that businesses who nurture their leads, so build that relationship with them, make 50% more sales. So sending them consistent content via email that's actually helpful to them in getting them to where they want to go. And then at the end of that email, after you've delivered value, definitely make a call to action of saying, hey, by the way, here's a product or here's a service that I believe will help you. Make sense? Yeah, cool. So this is a big part of what I do um, with my business, Conscious Copy. It's like as soon as we get the name and email, what is that experience that they have in building a relationship between the business and the customer? So if they sign up for the webinar, what are the emails that they're getting up, leading up to the webinar to answer their objections, to build that relationship, to get them to show up to the webinar? And then after, if they, if they showed up to the webinar and they didn't buy or they didn't show up, like what is that sequence after that of just, again, building that relationship and giving them more value in the way that's very strategic that will guide them to the end goal or destination of becoming a customer. So I'd love for you just to get curious. Do any of you feel like by starting to implement some of this into your business would increase your bottom line? Yeah? yeah? Who here like does a certain degree of, of that, like of the customer experience? 
Raise your hand. Okay, so like half of you, that's incredible. And I even just challenge you to look at your copy in there um, of what you currently have set up and say, is there anything that I can just connect with them a little bit more or answer the questions that are stopping them from buying? Or maybe just survey your list um, and see what is it that they really want. Cool? Case in point, you're leaving a lot of sales on the table if you're not following up your, with your leads. So make sure to just simply use email follow-up systems. It can be automated. It is a lot of work up front. I'm not going to pretend that it's not. But once it's set up and it's dialed in, that is truly automated. The third ninja trick is being the reorder business. So um, my good friend, Joe Polish, who has become one of my uh, biggest mentors in this space, interviewed John Paul DeJour, the founder of Paul Mitchell Systems, as well as uh, Patron Tequila. He's a billionaire. And in their interview, it resonated with me so deeply. And he said, I'm in the reorder business. I don't care about the first sale. I care about the second sale. Be in the reorder business. And just asking yourself, like, the hardest part of business is getting someone to exchange their credit card or giving you their credit card. So why wouldn't you ask them again once you've delivered them the value or the result that they wanted? And again. And again. So you don't have to keep chasing brand new people. Make sense? Cool. So. To recap, ninja trick number one is rocking your prospect world using words, using copy. And again, a lot of people make it seem like copy is this like very complex thing, and you do need to study it. It is one of the most important parts of your business. But if there's just a place to start, it is getting clear of who is it, who's that exact person that you're talking to and understanding their entire world and just starting to speak to that. And then you can learn the, tact the really nitty tactics and strategies afterwards by really speaking in their language. Trick number two is that relationship marketing, shifting into traffic conversion. I'm going to bring you into my funnel, my annihilation series, and pretty much make you or force you to give me your credit card into I'm dealing with a human being. And trick number three, being in the reorder business. And how can you ask your current customers for another sale? Because they've already got results with you. And if you delivered and did a good job, why wouldn't they want to work with you again? One thing that I want to leave on before um, opening it up for Q&A, and I'm happy to answer any questions that you have at all. I'm an open book, especially if, if you want like the nitty gritty strategies, is that people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. This is one of the most profound quotes that um, my mentor, Harvey McKay, shared with me years ago, and it's what I think about every single time that I sit down to write a sales page or to write a campaign is, just like what I shared with you at the beginning of if I just started listing off all this stuff that you should do with your business, you'd be like, you don't even know me. You don't know what I'm going through. You don't know where I'm currently at. But just meet them where they're at. Show them that you care. Show them that you actually want to help them. And then you can share with them what you know and the more, the more head, heady stuff. Cool? Cool. All right, so with the rest of the time, we have quite a bit. I'm open to Q&A. Um, any questions that you specifically have around copywriting or email marketing, totally an open book. Yeah, what's that? So, I'm selling slippers. Okay. Uh, how do I identify with my customer? Selling slippers. How okay. do I identify with my customer on that? Okay, so who typically is your customer? If there was like the range, what does that person look like? So my avatar? My, yep, my, your, my your customer avatar. is 35-year-old woman, uh, could be in a relationship, probably not married, 
middle income, drives a Camry. Okay. And so you're asking how to identify yeah, if I'm with selling, her. I mean, I, when we're selling e-com or we're selling, you know, Facebook ads or we're doing something like that, you know, I, I can relate. I can s solve a problem. Slippers are cute and they're fuzzy. Um, I just bought... I just bought a pair of slippers. My biggest problem, I was so tired, my feet being cold. Okay. Right? So that's my, my problem. What's my desire? I don't want cold feet, and I want comfy-ass slippers. And if they look cool, that's a bonus. And then going into even deeper, like, why? Like, maybe you have bad circulation, and you need slippers. But, but it's selling that, like, imagine how comfy these are going to be on your feet. And you're going to be able to walk around your house and look cool doing it. Okay. Cool. That's it. Yeah. Yep, what's up? Hi. Or, I can't. Okay, I oh, the there. Yeah. I got the mic. Hi, Jennifer. Thank you so much. Um, question I have is um, I like to do little videos, like half minute, one minute videos, blending it into my email copy. Um, can you talk about that? Is that something that you go like, yep, go for it? And it's just uh, I'm not sure if I understand the... the when, when I'm emailing, when I'm e following follow-up emails or just, you know, emailing my list, mm -hmm. um, breaking it up and putting a little video in the text. Sure. You know, just not just a talk, 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 but also that they can listen to me and, and get, you know, I'd like, I'd like to think that helps in building a relationship, mm -hmm. seeing that I'm not perfect because I don't do it in the studio. I just do it at random and sometimes it goes wrong, a plane comes over or whatever. Yep. So that's... That is something that you say, yeah, do that and keep doing that. Sure. I mean, if it, if it works, I would keep doing it, definitely. Um, with something like video, um, it's really powerful to have text before the video to lead up to it. And there's a term called an open loop. So it's like, do you want me to tell you the number one secret to how to walk in heels without wiping out on stage or whatever? And that could be like the text, and then you lead into, well, in the video, I'm going to share with you that. So now you're teeing up the video so that people actually want to watch it. Um, and you can do that with anything, especially with your Facebook ads. It's like, what is an open loop that you can create? The three secrets that other supplement companies don't want you to know about what they put inside their supplements. Or the shockingly easy way to learn how to speak Spanish or whatever it is, right? So you want to create an open loop to lead into it, but definitely if, if video is working for you, I do see that that works um, quite well as long as you're like teeing it up and there's value in that video for sure. Yep. Do you have any recommendations for copy sales books or psychology of copywriting that yes. you personally use? Over here. Okay, there we go. Hi. Yes, okay. This is so huge. Um, I, when I first started studying copy um, and marketing, I, um, I started like dabbling in the people who were current, like who were doing it and doing it pretty well that are relevant today. And one of my mentors was like, one of the most powerful things that you could do is study the dead marketers. So the dead marketers are people like Eugene Schwartz, Robert Collier, Gary Halbert, um, David Ogilvy. You heard uh, Nicholas talk yesterday about quoting some of those people. And why that is, is because he, essentially marketing and copywriting is human psychology and human behavior. And that never changes. That was relevant 60 years ago, and it's relevant now. And so if you... Um, study from those people, they knew it the best. And it's just meaty, meaty content. Eugene Schwartz has a, a book called Breakthrough Advertising. It's like a $250 book, but it is the marketing Bible. And so I study from that. One of the most powerful things that I've done personally to step up my copy game has been, um, everyone says writing sales copy by hand. So you write the sales copy so it really registers in your mind. But I actually did that. So for the first 20 minutes um, of me starting my workday, the first 20 minutes, I would read the best sales copy from all these guys um, that I just mentioned. And then for the next 20 minutes, I would write that sales copy by hand. 
and for the, the third 20 minutes, I would write my own sales copy. And that took my skill level from like intermediate kind of to here within about six months. Cool? Any other? Yep, what's up? Yeah, I had a question. You said you, uh, when you're contacting your prospects, you do like to get information of, out of them, you ask them, are you doing that through a survey or how are you doing that? Couple of different ways. So depending who your, um, your target audience is, I'm that weirdo who like, if I run into someone who is an ideal customer, and I'm just having a conversation with them and I notice some of the language that they're using that's relevant to what I do, I'm like taking notes in my phone after that conversation. And I'm also the person who I send out a survey to my list. Hey, what's the number one thing that, uh, the number one problem that you're facing right now? And then they keep leaving those open-ended questions so where they can answer it and I can hear in their language. Um, and with higher level clients, it is just like getting on calls with them and seeing how they're describing what their problems are. And what's interesting is you'll notice a consistency of with your ideal clients or customers or prospects, they all, um, you can put it almost into buckets. It's like, oh, consistently this is how all they describe what their problem is and what they believe the solution to be. Nice. And I had one other question on after you, um, you said making contact with them after five minutes. Can you speak to that? Is that a customer? Is that a, a prospect? Where That's as that soon as they opt into your email list. Okay. Yep, so as soon as they opt in, name and email, you're sending them an email, and that first email is the most important one because it tees up everything else. Um, so you want to really describe to them, like, hey, introduce yourself, maybe show some personality, share a story, here's what you can expect from me moving forward, and how it's going to be helpful to you. Cool. Yep, what's that? I greatly admire your vulnerability on, on that opening video. Uh, I would be curious to know uh, what mindset you were in when you made it. Oh, this is a good question. So, great question. Um, I knew right from the beginning, I was like, I'm gonna be super freaking successful in my, like the idea of success in my eyes. It's just a matter of when. So I was like, I want to document this process so I can remind myself of like what I'm going through in real time. And it's actually like one of the things that I, I still consistently do. I'll record these short videos of just check in. This is where I'm at emotionally. This is how I'm feeling. Um, because I think it's so cool just to see um, where we're at. And for me, I was like, oh, how awesome is this going to I was like, how can I mo monetize this? Like, how can I reflect back and be like, holy crap, like, this was then, this is now, for me personally, and then also to show other people, like, I was there. And I know that the video I recorded last week, I'm going to look at in a couple years from now and be like, oh my gosh, look at this gap. So I highly recommend you all do that. It's so fun to see. Yeah, a lot of questions. Okay. Um, whoever has the mic. Right here. Yeah. Um, my question is, uh, do you have any particular pet peeves in regards to copyright as far as um, just you being so indulgent and obviously you have things that you like to see and there's things that are like, oh my goodness, like, I hate, it, like, it makes you cringe in a sense. Do you have any particular, I don't know if there's particular sayings or way people approach people or is there, you get what I'm saying? I think so. So what are my pet peeves when it comes to copy? Yeah, basically. You know, I, I look at... Copywriting and marketing is a lot like music, where it's like everyone has their own take on it. I have my own take, and some people would feel so repelled at the idea of building a relationship with their prospect, and that's cool. That's not the person that I attract. So I, I can't really say that I have any pet peeves. If I did, like, at the core, like, an just answering that question, um, it would be, like, anything that's super uh, manipulating, that you could tell like at the core isn't trying to actually help people. Like it's like, it just, you feel it and you're like this is really sleazy and it, I just feel bad reading this because I know that they're trying to make me feel bad about myself right now in order to buy. That doesn't feel good. Yeah. Hi Jen, um, thank you very much. I love words. Um, what are your top 
five either copywriters or books that you recommend? Okay, so uh, some of them that I mentioned earlier, um, like Breakthrough Advertising by Eugene Schwartz, um, The Advertising Solution by, um, oh my goodness, my mind is blank. Advertising Solution by, it's not by David Ogilvy. It's a really small red book that's so awesome. Um, and really powerful. One of my favorites, actually, it's a little bit newer. It's by uh, Brian Kurtz and Craig Simpson, and it is called The Advertising Solution. And it's the top five copywriters and marketers, like the dead copywriter marketers, and the two of them, Brian and Craig, compiled all of like the core principles that those five copywriters and marketers taught into one book. And so I like it. I went and read all of their books individually, but I like referencing the advertising solution because it's just like at its core, really powerful book. Yep. What did I say? Oh, okay. Yeah, Craig Simpson and Brian Kurtz. Um, those would be like the top ones. Um, Gary Halbert. Uh, he has like the, um, what does he call them? It's like these letters that he wrote when he was in jail. <laughs> it was really intense, but it's like amazing copy. Yeah. So those would be the top ones, though. And then like relevant today, um, my friend Joe Polich has a book coming out called um, um, Joe's Marketing Book, and it's like at, really at the principle. It's, it's like the meaty stuff that I just love, that's going to be relevant for years. Any other questions? Sure. So you went locally to school. Uh, are you part of uh, Joe Polish's I Love Marketing inter uh, group? Okay. Yeah. Actually, I recognized you from there. That's why. Um, talking about the open-ended conversation, I'm new in the business. I don't have any sales yet, but I hope that's going to change soon. But the few people I do have on my list that have gone into my store but have not bought, do I talk to them about, like, is there not why they didn't buy, but is there some, can I change the product somehow, or what would you suggest in, in that? Totally. The first thing I would do, so I think from what I'm understanding you ask, is like when you get people um, on your email list and they didn't end up buying your product or service, how do you figure out why they didn't buy? So um, the first thing that I would do is really identify what their objections are. So you could do that by sending a survey like, hey, just curious, you didn't buy my product or service, just wondering why. Would you mind filling out this one question survey just telling me why you didn't buy? And then taking all of those questions or those answers or responses to them, it was too much time, it was too much money, I don't feel like it would have worked for me, um, it seemed too complicated, I didn't understand what the benefit was actually going to be, all of those things. Um, and then you create copy around that and make sure that you are answering those questions before they get to the cart next time, or if they abandon your cart right after that. Hey, you may be feeling like this isn't going to work for you. Well, let me share with you three um, stories of people who felt the exact same way. Or you may feel like this isn't a good value. Well, let me sh share with you why it is. Yeah. I believe I heard Facebook is getting real sensitive about the directive of you in our pitches or on, in our posts. What is the best way to overcome that that uh, instinctive thing to say you? What what's the best way for us to get over that and readdress the uh, post to present something? Um, so they're they're saying that you can't use you. That's what I heard in the, in the uh, lessons, is their Facebook is starting to get sensitive about the directive of you hmm. can do this, or you can lose this, or, you know. Gotcha. So, I mean, I haven't heard that, but if, if that um, is the case, then I would totally uh, use stories. So, be like, let me tell you a story about Janet. And then instead of using you, I'd use the person's name, but still make it seem like it's all about them. Does that, does that answer your question? So like, yeah, using different ways without that would be like sharing a story. 
my personal experience. Well, one of the things that I think to piggyback on that is that it's, it's about like, if I'm saying you can lose weight, you can't do that on Facebook anymore. Mm -hmm. You can't talk about somebody's weight or somebody's body or somebody's right. lack of exercise or need to exercise. So I think that may be what she's referring to. But the way I've done it with exercise, I did yoga and just talking about feeling better and looking better, that got banned. So we just went in and told the story about, oh my God, I feel so great. And, da -da -da -da. and it was much better, much more well, well received. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yep. Any other questions? Yeah, there's a couple more here. A couple more things that I want to share. So um, on these questions are amazing. And this is kind of like how I like to interact. It feels a lot better because I want to enter the conversation that's going on in your mind. I want to answer the questions that you have in order to make sure that you have them answered and you feel them to like confident moving forward. And so when it comes to copy, again, I know it feels really counterintuitive and a lot of work, but the best copy, copy is not a super creative thing. It's about going into the research and understanding everything about your ideal client or customer or prospect, understanding their entire world, and then simply like plugging and playing the language that they use in a strategic way. That's, that's in essence what it is. So I was just wondering, the more um, the common person is doing the internet marketing thing, the more I've seen in a lot of email marketing and Facebook, tons of uh, grammatical er errors and things like that. Is that something that um, is just now just okay, commonplace, and we shouldn't worry about it? Or is that something that there should be a focus on where you have somebody that has an eye for that reading over all your stuff so that you're not one of those? Yeah, one of those. One of those. Um, <laughs> I can relate to this. I actually, what's funny is I have the worst grammar and spelling ever, like ever. And I have a team that looks through all of my stuff, um, all my spelling and grammar, and we always do like three times over, especially when it comes to clients. Um, but I, I look at that in a couple of different ways. Number one, I'll look at it like if that's the thing that's stopping you from writing copy, who the F cares. I would just go with it. And like, if that is the thing that's holding you up, don't let it hold you up because it's so minor. The second thing is if people make a huge stink about it, they're not your ideal customer anyways. If that, like literally, it's eating them up inside that you spelt a word wrong, like you're human. Um, however, for some people, that does maybe take away from credibility sometimes. And so you can easily go on a site like um, what I did when I first started out was I went on Upwork and I got um, a person and I, I paid her like eight bucks an hour. So anytime I had copy, I would just send it over to her and she would spelling and grammar check it um, before I ended up launching it. And because mine was like that bad. Um, but I wouldn't, you know, that, that would be my answer to that. It is kind of like becoming the norm or like slang. That's another thing, like writing like you talk, but sometimes it does take away from it a little bit. Like if you have a sales page, I would get it looked over, but if you're just writing a Facebook post, I wouldn't really worry about it. Yeah. Hi, thank you again for being here. Um, thank so, you for being here. Oh, my pleasure. So she reminded me of a resource I, I found recently called Grammarly, and it just kind of like, uh, it's a Facebook, or not Facebook, but like a Chrome add-on. Plug-in, yeah. And it looks over your shoulder and gives you suggestions on stuff like that. Are there other resources that, that you find helpful that helps you with, with inspiration or just um, the copywriting process that you and your team utilize that mm -hmm. you might recommend or suggest? Yeah. So we, we uh, created frameworks for ourselves for our email campaigns or for a sales page. And um, so we'll always just go back to those frameworks. Um, and I'd be happy if Chris or Peter, um, I can send some of those frameworks over to you guys of like, this is what a sales page should look like. Like header, problem, story, solution, offer, all of that. So you have like a framework, cool? 
Awesome. I love it. Yeah. Cool. So I can definitely do that. Good? Good questions. Guys, let's give it up for Jennifer Hootie. Thank you. Woo! Come on, you guys can do better than that. Awesome, thank you. Thanks.